That night was crazy because um, Trey's uh, eight, Trey was finna sign that big old deal that he just signed, right? And just tell you how real Trey is, like, uh, shout out to Trey. Trey was supposed to sign that deal, his big $200 million deal that, that, that next day or whatever. So his agent, the Hawks, hell, even his pops, they didn't want him to do it. Yeah, they didn't want him to hoop. They didn't want him to take me no risk. Yeah. But Trey's so solid, man. He's so solid to the city. He knew that, you know, because I don't announce nothing until Trey didn't tell me to. So he knew that he didn't want to back out of it. So, I mean, if you look at it, bro, like, people don't know, like, the mayor of Oklahoma City was up, uh, up there at the top. A Hawks representative, freaking everybody was up there in the top with all eyes on him, like just praying, like nothing happened. Told you was giving you the okay, okay, back today to make a way. Gonna, uh, all right, so we got the founder of the Skins League, Chris Skinner, sitting down with us. What's going on, bro? Man, slow motion, bro. Yeah. Slow motion. Better than no motion. Yeah, you know? One day at a time. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, um, you know, this is the first time we did this. I don't know, you know, how familiar you are. We usually try to tell, you know, the whole story a little bit before we get into the the current events so i want to kind of do that just just a little bit touch on some things so they can kind of get to know you a little better i um, work so we talked about it off camera a little bit you, you're from mangum right um, mangum oklahoma you, you split time in you, you were born in georgia or you you were born out here no, i was born in mangum and then my mom took us to georgia she took us to georgia and uh we was out there and then came back got in a little trouble and came back to mangum Gotcha. So you ended up graduating Mangle. there? Mm -hmm. Play ball and everything? Yeah, uh, everything. Football, basketball, and baseball. Gotcha. So that's sports was always the... Yeah, that's the only thing you do in the country. You know what I mean? Sports and... Shit, if you ain't doing sports, you're doing stuff you ain't supposed to be. For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. So basketball was... was basketball born. was the first love. Football was the easiest. Basketball was the first love. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you, you, you look like a football player now. That's what everybody <laughs> say. But I wasn't I would always this big. You know what I mean? I was smaller when I first came out. But, yeah, basketball definitely the first love. Gotcha. So that's what you ended up going with, going was, to college? Yeah, going to college, playing basketball. And I had, I had a lot more offers to go play uh, football, but I just wanted to play ball, basketball. For sure. For sure. So you ended up playing in, in Altus, right? Western Oklahoma State. I had a lot more offers, and they had no grades. Messing around and uh, she went to Altus and then uh, transferred to uh, went to West Texas and then from there messing around and finished off at Bacon. Okay, uh, so you played four years? Yeah, four, four, five years because I okay. tore my leg up. Gotcha, gotcha. Is that what ended up kind of ending the career? Man, I just uh, I had a few things going, but uh, man, I, I had an old lady and I had a baby and. Uh, we had to eat, so I just went to the oil field, you know what I mean? And then uh, from the oil field, I just stuck. Once you get, once you stop hooping, you know what I mean? It's a wrap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Once you stop, don't never stop, because if you stop, it's a wrap. Yeah, them knees don't don't. Yeah, back, don't man. nothing work. <laughs> don't nothing work the same. Don't you, don't, you don't recover the same. It's just, you lose the passion to work like that. So, I went for to the sure, field. For sure, but I mean, you kept you kept playing like rec leagues and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, money tournaments, rec leagues, whatever. You know, just off of talent though, because it was strictly get off the rig or hoop. You know what I mean? Still, still living that dumb fantasy that you go into the league overseas and you working every day, working twelve hours, like just being naive. But yeah, kept kept hooping, kept hooping to the point like you you were hooping. When the Skins League started still. Yeah, man. I hooped in uh, Skins League 1 and Skins League 2. And then uh, I ain't never had no hamstring injuries in my life. And I was guarding one of them little fast young doys. And boy did a move and <laughs> messed my hammy off. And I ain't touched the basketball like that since. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can tell when it's time. To, All right, it's a wrap. I ain't one of them ones that's going to sit up there and play till I'm 40 and... You know what I mean? Be out here getting busted by these young boys, but they can be talking crazy. I'm cool. I'm, I really just talk my shit from the sideline, yeah. and they'll never know if they can bust my ass or not because I'm never playing. <laughs> For, sure. For sure. So let's get into, you know, the original, um, like the founding of the Skins League. I mean, what was, what made you feel like, um, you know, there was a need for, for you know, a pro-am type of league in, in Oklahoma City? Man, I really... Like, uh, I'm sure y'all, I mean, y'all know, I'm sure I done told this story a, t a thousand times. Like, my best friend got ALS. I mean, if you go to, if you go to Scansley, you probably see him. And uh, I threw a basketball tournament, 
you know, for him to support, you know what I mean? And just the response from the community, like, it was something we needed. And then you're looking at all these different leagues. We had so many different leagues, but they were trash, you know what I mean? You might have one good team, and then the rest of them you're beating by 30. So I just sat up there and took teams from all of those different leagues and put them in just for competition. I'm a competition junkie, you know? And before you know it, you know, it started out with just – Local guys that hoop and college players, you know what I mean? Lo uh, lower division college players. And then, before you know it, like overseas, G League, NBA, you know, guys like that start going. And I think that was about Skins League 3 where we started getting like big time players like that. 2018, 19? Yeah, somewhere in there. League guys yeah. started coming and stuff, right? Yeah. So yeah. Do you, what do you feel like the, the switch was? Was there something that happened? That Man, so, so Woodson. And I ain't got no hard feelings against Woodson. But Woodson tried to pull some BS on me. Uh, it was like two weeks before Skins League 3. And Skins League was starting to get a little buzz or whatever. So two weeks before it, they tried to run the bag up on me and tell me like... The, the school? No, nah, not the Woodson the, uh, Park, the recreational oh, okay. park, Woodson, where we had Skins League 1 and 2 and 3. Uh, and uh, they tried to run the bag on me because they were saying like we was... Uh, they seen the crowds. And uh, they thought that we was making money, but we wasn't making no money, man. We was barely, you know what I mean? We was barely clearing 40 bucks, maybe. And uh, anyways, luckily we had a contract. And once I got out of Woodson, once I got out of Woodson and went to uh, went north to Edmond, that's when it really, like, took off. But I got uh, Trey Young to um, judge the dunk contest. And when I got Trey Young to do the dunk contest, and then I got Samaj Christian who was playing for the Thunder at the time. When I got them, that's when I started getting like, hey, well, you probably can get him, or you probably can get him. And then the overseas guys and the OU guys and the OSU guys started coming because everybody everybody wants that competition, right? Everybody wants that smoke. Everybody see Trey. Trey's six foot, 170 pounds. Everybody be like, shit, I can do that. So when they get a chance to play Trey, everybody want to go at him. You know what I mean? So you start getting more guys just to try to get that uh, that competition. Yeah, for sure. And that's it, it's hard to come by for the elite guys in the summertime. So if you got a, a room right. where, you know, they can. Uh, right, 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 right. Boys can't fuck with him. <laughs> 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 no, for sure, for sure. I got, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about that later. But you you mentioned the the 30 point. I know that's something that's. Uh, Patton. Yeah. Yeah, thirty point rule is patent, bro. Like, uh, so I originally came up with the thirty point rule because, like, like I said, like when we was playing in all these other leagues, you might play one team, two team per league, and it might, you know, what I mean, it might be a close game, it might be ten, fifteen, but the rest of the teams, man, you just beaten by thirty and forty, so you just basically looking at the clock the whole time, just ready for this shit to be over with, right? So I always say, like, if I get a league like that, damn, uh, once you get past thirty, it's a wrap. You know what I mean? Because you, you're, you're on a time crunch, right? So the clock's running constantly. You know what I mean? The clock. So if you get down by 30 and on, on a running clock, you don't belong here anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's hard as hell to get done by 30 on a running clock. So basically just that's how I came up with the rule. And then uh, we ended up getting it patent. You know what I mean? We ended up getting it patent. And I done had people from Drew League. I done had people from everywhere hit me up like, bro, I love that rule. You know what I mean? And it keeps the game, keeps the game entertaining for the fans because like a lot of people just give up, you know what I mean? Like, but they know damn well if you give up, I mean, if you give up and you get beat by 30, you out the league. So you just lost your whole entry fee and everything all because you got smacked by 30. You know what I mean? So it's it's great for the league. For sure. It makes it, keeps it competitive even. Yeah, and it shows <laughs> the fans love it, you know what I mean? Because and it's kind of ruthless. Cause and I, just, I've been there when people got 30 balls. You? It's like they, they start rooting one way or the other. Yeah, you know, they want it's you. Not to, close, exactly. Like, and that's that's another aspect of it. Like the fans become fans of the team that's been a 30 piece them because they just want to see it. Like it's kind of ruthless, actually, because it's like, damn, y'all want to see them out the league. Yeah. It's cool though. It's cool. I the, love it. The fan. It's a unique uh, atmosphere. I mean, I've never been to like you know, record league or Drew League or nothing like that. But I, I feel like there's a uh, maybe because the venue is just real intimate. It's a is vibe. that on purpose? It's a vibe. Yeah, I get offered all the time. Like you want to bring the league here. You want to bring the league here. You want to bring the league here. But and even the NBA players told me like they love the vibe because the player the the fans are on top of you, right? So it's something about like uh, playing uh, 
you know, playing in front of 25,000 people. That's cool. Don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? But, like, when you're playing in front of five, 600 people and they right on your neck, it's a little different. You know what I'm saying? It's a little different. And then, you know, 25,000 people, like, the only people you hear talking shit to you is the ones in the front row. But 600 people, you hearing he talking shit, he talking shit, he talking shit. You hearing it. You feel me? So you better perform. And... And we don't have NBA players coming there and airball free throws and like it's a little different, you know. What I mean, especially if you get if you get that right crowd that's been liquored up a little bit or whatever, and they talking big yeah, boy shit. Game, right? Yeah, you know what I mean. So it, it's it's a fun atmosphere. It's safe, but it's, you know what I mean. It's just a lot of shit talking. For Love sure. it for sure. And kind of going piggybacking on the um, like the competitive side of things. I mean, how do you you guys go into to picking the teams? I mean, I'm. I kind of know a little bit, but right. people s submit a roster? Right, so we give a deadline, you know what I mean? Uh, probably about a month and a half before the Skins League start, we'll sit up there and we'll post like open for registration, right? So teams will sit up there and they'll put their roster in. Well, I got a team, man. I got a team of five guys. Man, and I'm talking about these guys are, they're like, I don't want to call them nerds because they good dudes, right? But they like hoop addicts. So what they do is, man, they'll see that roster and they will dissect that thing. I'm talking about dissect it. So if you say this dude right here went to freaking uh, Georgia Tech and then they're going to see, and if he didn't go to Georgia Tech, they're going to tell you, like, boy, you full of shit. You cap. You know what I mean? Like they, So we dissect it like that, you know, like basically it's based off your hoop background, right? Not to say, I mean, you ain't got to go D1, D2, whatever to say you can't hoop, right? But like. We're more prone to taking those guys for the competition level of it as opposed to the guy who got, like, I was killing in junior high. You know what I mean? Or whatever the case may be. But that's how we go about it. Like, we got a team, and we just dissect that thing. Like, we turned down 16 teams, 16 teams. I think 30, 30 31 teams submitted a roster, and we only take 16. Mm. So, and then when the third, like, going back to the 30-point rule, when a team set up there and get 30 piece, well, we'll go to one of those teams and we'll take one of those teams. And then to be fair, those players that got beat in the 30 point rule, they can still be in the league, but they got to get picked by the lower tier teams that's in the standings, right? That's where they got to get picked from. And then after a week go by, if none of the lower tier teams pick them up, well, now they're free game. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Almost yeah. like the draft, the way the, yeah. the worst teams get free. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. For sure. For sure. So, and if. If you get submitted on a roster that doesn't get picked up, are you a free agent from the You're jump? a free agent, yep. You're a free agent. Got you. So mm -hmm. how does that go, like, people? So basically with the free agency, uh, with those guys, with free agency is uh, we'll set up, it's called the portal, the Skins League portal, right? So they submit, like, 10 bucks. We got a 10-buck fee or whatever, and we'll put, your, we'll put your name, we'll put your college, your height, what you're doing, who you play for, whatever. We'll put that on there. And, you know, teams who they might need a player or whatever, they'll go through there and they'll look. And if it's somebody that they might be interested in, they'll come hit them up because your Instagram and your phone number's on there. And if they want you, you know what I mean, they'll scoop you up. But, like, most, like, we'll get some guys like um, Elijah Clark. You know, that's one that's first come to my mind right now. Elijah Clark or Bucket. Put him on a free agent list. He won't even last two minutes. You know what I'm saying? And then some guys, like, like the guy we was talking about beforehand, I won't mention his name. Uh, like he was on there forever, and it could be because people don't know him. People looking at it like, bro, you went to Blase Blase College, like you ain't played nobody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they look at it too. You know what I'm saying? So, but if you got if you anywhere over six five, you won't last long on the on the portal. <laughs> For sure. How do you go about it when the the big names come through? Is that just kind of based on their schedule? Somebody gets lucky or? Uh, far as um, you know, I mean. But uh, Hill comes to play on a Monday night. How, oh. who, who gets him? All right, so the way, the way that works is, right, like normally like um, like when Buddy call or whatever, uh, Buddy was a teammate with Ryan Spangler in uh, OU, right? So it's only natural, like, he want to play with Ryan Spangler. Or, I mean, that's, yeah. you know what I mean? So we'll put him on there. But like with, uh, with uh, uh, what's old Buddy's name? I can't remember his name. Uh he played for the Knicks. With him or whatever, he didn't really have nobody here. He didn't know nobody, but he just wanted to play. So I just put it. I looked at it, who was on the, who was struggling a little bit, and I put him on that team, and then I put him in a prime time spot. You know what I mean? So it's basically like who's struggling because you don't want to put him on a team that's already loaded. 
You know what I mean? And the whole point when you come here is you want the competition. Yeah. And I've had a lot of pros say about Skins League is like one thing about Skins League is like it, they they actually hooping like and no knock on no other pro amps whatsoever. You know what I mean? But like it's like one move and it's to the rim. Like ain't nobody contesting that or nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we really hoop. Game yeah, it's, it's, that's basically what it is. All star game event. But that's how it goes. And like with Trey or whatever, I'll send Trey a roster, and uh, he just go through it and he'll tell me who we want to run with or whatever. And then like we we got like more we got some more that I can't mention right now. We got like eight for them this year, so it'll be it'll be fun for sure for sure. So um, I want to get into the the pandemic times because I feel like that was <laughs> a good question. Um, a huge I, I feel like y'all grew crazy even though it was you know we weren't supposed to be outside type of you know. Well, I, I remember I think y'all went viral like Twitter Instagram crazy. somewhere crazy. because there was a video of. I mean, I I was there that night. Like everybody was in the gym, no mask. Crazy. Like, it was crazy. Uh, so how that worked was, you're supposed to have a mask on. They had masks, but it was here. Yeah. You know, instead of here. But the way that worked was like Stit had a lifted. You know what I mean? Like you were able to have two hundred. You know what I mean? Two hundred people in a room or whatever. It's supposed to be six feet apart. That's where we was fucking up at. Like it started out with. You know what I mean, six hundred feet, but it didn't end that way. But yeah, that 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 was a big that was it went it went super viral for good reasons and bad reasons. It was good because it kind of blew skins up. You know, it put us on notice. It was bad because like you know what I mean, a lot of people was I don't even want to call it hate, and I'll say more or less jealous because they was in the house and they they state hadn't released nothing, but. You know what I mean? Like like COVID was COVID, you know what I mean? And uh hell people was just ready they was ready to get out the house. And when they sat up there and lifted that stit lifted that, I got the okay. We went with it. Yeah. And shit. There we go. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean I y'all grew a lot that year, I feel like. We grew a lot, a lot because uh well for for a couple reasons though. Like a, a lot because we was the only hoop going. And then two too like I mean it was the only thing going a lot. That's what I'm saying. And people 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 seen like, oh damn, they really can't hoop in Oklahoma. You know what I mean? Which is a stereotype. Like people don't it ain't so much they don't think we can't hoop, but like they think like we well we just sit around here in spurs and ride horses and shit. And that ain't the case. You know what I mean? But yeah, we did go viral uh in a couple ways, good and bad. Yeah, for sure. And then mm -hmm. I know Buddy going back to the bubble had some problems, but that that yeah. I'm they tried to come back and that was on ESPN and stuff. But. Yeah, I talked to Buddy after that, and Buddy's like, "Man, I didn't get it from there. I got it from uh, the Blonde Barbie uh, nightclub in uh, Dallas or whatever type of shit." But I mean, I definitely ain't a believer in all publicity is good publicity. But in that case, yeah. it worked out for us for sure, for sure. So, um, I mean, just another while we're on, on viral moments. I mean the. I think probably the biggest one I got to ask you about it. I, I think it's two years ago, okay. um, Trey hit that game winner on. Yeah, definitely um, the biggest one. I can't. Spider. Remember, Spider. Yeah. And that, that I see that once a month on. Yeah. Like, mixtape, ball his life, something. Right, like that. right. Man, that you want to talk about that? Yeah. That night, man. So that night was crazy because um, Trey's uh, eight. Trey was finna sign that big old deal that he just signed, right? And just tell you how real Trey is, like, uh, shout out to Trey. Trey was supposed to sign that deal, his big $200 million deal that, that, that next day or whatever. So his agent, the Hawks, hell, even his pops, they didn't want him to do it. Yeah, they didn't want him to hoop. They didn't want him to take me no risk. Yeah. But Trey's so solid, man. He's so solid to the city. He knew that, you know, because I don't announce nothing until Trey didn't tell me to. So he knew that he didn't want to back out of it. So, I mean, if you look at it, bro, like, People don't know, like, the mayor of Oklahoma City was up uh, up there at the top, a Hawks representative, freaking everybody was up there in the top with all eyes on him, like, just praying like nothing happened. But that's also the reason why I, when I play that game, it's nothing but pros in there because everybody knows. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody, like, if he goes to the rim, you know what I mean? You can contest it, but don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that uh, if you know Spider, man, a lot of people didn't know Spider, but they know him now. Spider gonna talk his shit. Like, and Spider ain't no, he ain't just no dude that you just play in the wreck. Like, Spider can hoop. You know what I mean? He can hoop. 
six time, I think he's six year pro right now. Yeah. So anyways, Spider, Spider don't care, he's Trey Young, he don't give a damn. So anyways, they talking shit the whole time. The whole time. And uh before you know, before this, people didn't really know who Spider was viral or whatever. And I'll tell you a story about that as well after I get done. But uh him and Trey been talking shit the whole day, the whole day. And it couldn't have happened no better. Like, you don't you don't have scenarios like that. That's just God, you know what I mean, where you know, final possession and then he hit it. You know what I mean? And the best part about that man is like all the kids being around, like I'm, I'm real big about having those kids around the floor and stuff, being able to touch him, see him, talk to him, whatever. And when all those people rush that floor, like it's a goosebump feeling. You feel me? Like that's a that's a great moment. But uh, yeah, he hit that bitch, and that, that was definitely the biggest moment in Skins League history. You know what I mean? And it worked out for Spider too, cause Spider went and got, you know, he played overseas. He he negotiated like an extra twenty bands after that. Cause he became viral, like people was talking, like people he didn't even know was sitting over there sending him like hate, uh, I don't wanna say hate mail, but fucking, what do they call it when you getting it in your DMs and shit, you know yeah. what I mean? They just hitting him like that, and then, uh, what's the dude, man, who be talking shit all the time, a uh, little ugly dude, he uh, he uh, think he can hoop. Uh, um, most, uh, yeah, him. Yeah. He, he challenged Spider like $10,000 uh, one on one or whatever. I'm like, boy, Spider will kill your little ass. <laughs> But yeah, Spider Spider got real viral after that. You know what I mean? And shit, shout out to Spider now, man. He over there killing and making a bag. He he played last night. For sure, for mm -hmm. sure. So. Trey asked me about Spider too. Last uh, last year, he asked me about Spider how he was doing. So yeah, it's all good fun. Yeah, bro. It's just <laughs> friendly competition. You know what I mean? Yeah. Friendly comp. For sure. You you touched on something that I was gonna ask you about. Um, you know, kind of the. The GM, I don't know who you said was there, but the the people in his corner being nervous about you know yeah. him playing in that game. I know um, Chet last year in a in a different uh, yeah thing another pro -Am. Jamal Crawford's league right that was stupid yeah that was stupid Does stuff like that worry you at all you know the NBA kind of cracking down on now uh, I think the NBA it does worry me a little bit but at the end of the day like you're not gonna stop hoopers from hooping. Right, like I just seen, uh, I just watched the Drew League last night. Montrez Harrell in there, you know what I mean? Like they gonna hoop, but that's the whole point about that's the whole point. Like you gotta be NBA sanctioned because they gotta make sure that you're freaking. Uh, they gotta make sure that you're um, able to take care of the players. You got trainers there, uh, officials that are qualified. So they do everything they can, even though they know they're not gonna be able to stop them. They do everything they can with putting us through hoops for it's a safe environment for them. Uh, but no, not not really, because like I said, like we got we got pros and stuff, man. They not gonna if he gonna get hurt, it'll be because of you know what I mean, knock on wood, it'll be because of um you know what I mean, he twist the ankle, be going up and he yeah. came down wrong or something like that. That shit with Chet was stupid. Like it's a it's a charity game, man. Why are you trying to run down LeBron? Yeah. That's stupid. For sure. But I just mean in general, you know, the uh, you know, the league they, I mean, you don't like that number, or the three pick, or you know, something like that. Playing in the summer, getting hurt, missing the, the oh, Chad, of the year. he went number two. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. That's terrible for. I mean, I'm sure that's bad for the league, but that's great for the Thunder because he needed, a, he needed a red shirt anyway to fucking get some weight on him. But yeah, like, nah, that's bad. You know, but the same in the same game, fucking uh, uh, dude who uh, went number one, who was killing. He played in the same game. Yeah. He was killing, and he. I mean, Brian was playing in that game. Exactly, yeah. like, and you're not gonna stop hoopers from hooping, whether they do it on a sanction floor or whether they do it in pickup. They can, you know, what I mean, you can get hurt anywhere. Yeah. You know, what I mean, you can't control that. For sure. But yeah, like NBA has been pretty good to us, though. You know what I mean? For sure. So you you guys have that that relationship as far as being right, like, right, right. And then uh, at one point in time, like we were supposed to. We was gonna rock together, and the NBA was gonna use us like a little feeder system, like uh, if they want to see like a um, or the Thunder, I should say, uh, if they want to see a guy who, you know, what I mean, the blue, mm -hmm. then they would put him in Skinsley and see what he got. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah, we got we got a good relationship for sure, for sure. So, um, it, it's kind of become the place to be for the top high school kids too, which I think is super dope right. to get them in there and you know playing against against top guys like that. So kind of talk about, I mean, I'm sure that's 
you know, yeah. on purpose. Yeah, man. And you asking some good questions, some shit I ain't never been asked before. You did your shit. That's good. <laughs> uh, do what I can. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Throwing me off. Uh, nah, man, that's a good question. I wanted to do that because, um, for one, high school is the last. Uh, high school is the last. Uh, wave that you can set up there and you don't have to have no sanctions or anything you know what i mean like you don't have to have no ncaa sanctions. you don't have to have no nba sanction so but i only let the top ones play so i get hundreds of high school players like yo can i play can i play can i play i'm not saying that you can't hoop but we want the ones that's ranked because we want to see why they ranked yeah. you feel me like because they next right and then you have that rapport with them like uh trey alexander in a sense like Trey Alexander, he probably going to be a draft pick. Like he went, he did his thing in the combine. He went back to Creighton. He probably going to be a top twenty pick next year. But you got that rapport from him when he was in high school. So when he set up there and make it big time, he know that like skins set up there and let us rock when we was kids or whatever. Yeah. That when he become a household name, them kids want to see him. So him, he, he gonna come back. He gonna show love to skins league. You know what I mean? But you always want to give them that opportunity. But you know what I mean? And then a lot of those kids. A lot of kids, man, was sitting over there trying to skip Skins League High School and just play in Skins League Pro-Am. I'm like, nah, bro. And I'm real selective with the kids I let play, whether they top or not. I look at their body frames because Skins League is physical. Yeah. And I don't want none of them kids to. Yeah, it's physical. Yeah. So. Everybody's not ready to play with grown men. Everybody's not 16. ready. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like that bump to a grown man is nothing. That bump to a high school kid could be a broken rib. You know what I mean? So I'm real leery on that. For sure, for sure. Is it gotten any better? I saw you talking a few years ago about the the prizes and stuff like that with the NIL. You know, changing yeah. stuff for you guys. Has that affected y'all much? Nah, not at all, really. You know what I mean? Because I mean, we're a nonprofit anyway. You know what I mean? But the NIL, nah, it don't affect I'm us just at saying, all. Making it easier to you know get them in there and. Oh, to come who? Yeah, do stuff like that. Nah, man, to be honest with you, like, I, I didn't know. Uh, only thing NIL done changed with Skins League is uh, we used to always have judges and stuff for, like, three points or a dunk contest or whatever. And I pretty much could get, like, any OU guy I wanted. Like, I had C.D. Lamb, but he ended up uh, getting sick. But I could get Lauren Chamberlain everybody. Now with NIL, everybody's like, well, this is what I'm getting paid. This is what I'm getting paid. Man, fuck that. I'm good. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, so I got some just just some random questions, things I, you know, I think you might have a good opinion on. All right. Before we kind of get, I, I want to touch on this season, but just, you know, some random stuff before we get to that. So, um, I mean, you've been around Oklahoma basketball a long time. Right. So, all time, doesn't even have to be league guys, just starting five from Oklahoma. Ooh. Uh, Blake Griffin. Easy. Easy work. Uh, Trey Young. Yeah. Uh, Kalen Azabuki. Okay. You ain't heard of that one, huh? Uh -uh. I know. Yeah. <laughs> he tough. Uh, Marcello Vili. And uh, I need one more. Yeah. Uh, who I'm missing? Uh, give me a. Uh, old buddy, uh, Obi Manila. Okay. That's why. Yeah. Who, that's why. Who do who do people normally say? You're the first one we've asked that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Clint Osabuki was a monster. You know what I mean? If you don't know who Clint Osabuki is, look him up. For sure. He's he's from Oklahoma City. He's from Tulsa. Okay. Yeah, he's Tulsa. Or whatever. He uh, he went to Kentucky, and uh, he left after one year because uh. Uh, his pops got into some trouble with something, so he ended up going to the league. But in high school, he was different. He had already had a personal trainer and everything. Like he was just different. It's massive. It's He's a couple of people I could think of. You might. I mean, who? He's a, uh, somebody's gonna be Wayman Tisdale. I mean, is a tough yeah, of course. One. You know what I mean? But uh, I ain't that old. What's bro's name? Nah, this one, I might have put him in mind. Uh, what is bro's name? He went to Douglas. He went to OSU. Stevie Clark. Stevie Clark is yeah. tough. Yeah, yeah, Stevie Clark. Um, he was in trades. Yeah. He was in trades. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just thought you, I just wanted to see, you see, see nah, who you had. That's mine right there. Um, for sure. So getting into the, the league stuff, um, I don't know how, how, how closely you follow the, the league. Uh, quite, pretty, quite a bit. Like, um, not as much before it was all like, um, 
you could already predict it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, but pretty. You know what I mean? I'm in there. So what do you what do you think about the Phoenix uh, with Bradley Bill? Bradley Bill. I ain't a Bradley Bill fan. Like I think Bradley Bill is just a good player on a bad team. Like, I'm not, you remember how Kevin Love was so good in Minnesota, and then when he ended up getting on a normal team, he just became a normal person. Yeah. I don't think Bradley Bill's that great. I just think Bradley Bill got to shoot a lot of volume shots. So you I'm, think he's a, a role player? On I think he's a role player. You think they should have kept CP here? Nah, CP. CP ain't reliable in the uh, playoffs. I think there was there's a lot of people that want that CP contract because they get to eat it. You know what I mean? And then they'll have that much cap space left. So I, I think like you know what I mean somebody that they probably should have went and got hell. I would have tried to go get Dame before, but they ain't got a pick for it. I don't know. Hell, go get Brandon Ingram. You know what I mean? But nah, I, I, I'm cool on the Bradley Bill. What about what about uh, Chris Paul? You think he hang it up? What do you think? I don't know if he should hang it up because he's still getting the bag. But I, if I'm if I'm a point guard, I'm gonna go get Westside before I go get uh, CP. You know what I mean? At least I know West gonna be there in the playoffs. Even though West be doing some crazy stuff, man, you still let me get him. Cause and don't get me wrong, CP my top two or three point guards of all time. But every playoff, man, his body just break down. Yeah. But, nah, man, he'll go down there with LeBron or whatever, and they'll get their ass whooped. Like, oh, man. For sure. So, um, one more just kind of, you know, random as far as, uh, you know, you do it. That's part of your job is kind of projecting talent. Right. And, you know, we got the biggest, uh, the most high player I can remember. I was, you know, four years old when LeBron went into the league, so. The, yep. the most hyped player I can ever remember coming into the league this year. What you think of, uh, about Vic, Victor? Cole. Bro, like, his skill set is crazy. You know what I mean? Everybody like, yeah, but they gonna, he going to get bullied in the NBA, bro. We don't play in we don't play in the 90s NBA. That's why I'm cool with Chet. Like, yeah, I get it. They thin. But like, we don't play in that. You don't play in the Charles Oakley, Anthony Mason NBA. You know what I mean? Like the big dude stretch out here. They'll be fine. Ain't nobody going to be able to stop Wimby just off his intangibles. You know what I mean? But then now you mix it in the handles and jump shot. Yeah, he tough. Yeah. I'd rather have Scoop, but he tough. Would you? I like Scoop. But Scoop, that two inches hurt me. Like, I thought, I was thinking Scoop was like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, I didn't know he was just 6'2". So, I don't know. I'll take Vic, though. Yeah, yeah you almost have to. Yeah. That's kind of like, like Zion and Ja. Yeah. You you had to take Zion, but Ja was like... Right. You know. Ain't you glad you... Man, people tripping with the Zion thing. I understand if you'd be on some... Like, oh, he always hurt. But, like, Blake Griffin was hurt his first year. MB was hurt his first year. I mean, first couple years, like, okay. But the personal stuff, man, like, he ain't doing nothing that we all wouldn't do with that kind of bread. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, now, Ja, he just stupid. Yeah. I'm cool on him. You done? Yeah, I'm, he not done. I'm just cool on that. That yeah. dumb, like, like people, people like me. You trying to, you trying to get out of the hood, and this dude, you over here trying to be something you not, and gonna mess around and get your ass knocked off. So I'm cool on it. For sure, yeah. Now I, I kind of thought they went easy on him with the 25, really. Yeah, because he kind of proved to him, like, hey man, it's a toy gun. You know what I mean? Like, whether he did, whether he didn't. But at the end of the day, how the NBA into making money too? Like, yeah. shit, 25 games, shit. The damn Grizzlies can be 12 and 12. You still can make the playoffs, you know what I mean? You still got 60-something more games to go, so NBA ain't stupid. For sure. So let's let's get into this season, man. We just just kicked off last night. Skins League, what is this, the seventh? It's eight. Eighth year eight. of the Skins League. Right. So, I mean, how'd the, the first night go? Crazy. A lot of people, a lot of good energy. I've been getting a lot more, like, a lot of people have been hitting me up, like, not only just from the talent level, but a lot of people just, like, the energy is there. Ain't no bad energy, you know what I mean? And that's big, you know what I mean? That's huge when you get all positive energy, you know what I'm saying? So, but first night, a lot of talent. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of talent. I think we totaled up to 71 pros this year between the rosters, which is really good. That's the second highest we done had. And we still got people coming over from overseas or whatever. And uh, just a lot of good hoop, man. You know what I mean? Got uh, Daquan. Uh, play for the Knicks or whatever. He was there last night. He put on a show for the kids and stuff. And great food. Uh, I don't know if y'all ate D.D. Westbrook's food truck, but man. No, I seen it driving down 35 one day. I bro, yeah, you got to walk it down. You got to walk it down. It's good, bro. It's super good. Yeah, it's really good. 
I'm a big fish fan. <laughs> I'm a big fan. You see how I gazed yeah, you off. Do. You heard me? I got to thinking about that, John. You heard me? Yeah, it's good, bro. It's super good, though. Yeah, it's really good. But, uh, yeah, first night, good energy. Second night, going to be even better. And, you know, the first night, we was, we was going against other uh, Juneteenth events. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know what I mean? It's only going to get better because it's only one Juneteenth. For sure. For sure. So, I mean, you got to... Is your you still got a team in the in the mix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I was going I was going to chill, but then the same guys that I play with in Skins League is the same guys that we go to these traveling teams with. And they're like, man, just you know what I mean. Let's keep it going. So we keep it going. For sure. Well, I was going to ask you who's the favorite, but is that a? I mean, nah, it ain't because like I got a whole bunch of guys that are like individuals, like you know, they they individuals. So you got to be able to bring that together. The favorite's always A Town though. Like them dudes been playing together for years. And then you got Deontay Burton, he got a cool team. Uh I don't know if y'all know, follow uh the TBL, but that uh Pot of Water Me Fire team, they in the finals right now, they in it too. Mm. So nah, like it ain't a foregone conclusion or nothing. Which is that's the great, which is what I was telling you about the NBA. Like I really stopped looking at the NBA when I knew that the Warriors was gonna win it. You know what I mean? So now, I wasn't saying it was a lock that your team was gonna win. I just thought you would you would ride for him a little bit, <laughs> a little bit oh, harder. No. Than... <laughs> nah, bro, I ain't biased from that. Like, shit, I ain't, I ain't biased. Like, it is what it is. Like, it, like people, they know me now. They like shit. I don't care if they win or if they lose. Like, I just care about if the league is good. Yeah, that's it. For sure. So I I know you um, uh, you got any anybody up your sleeve that we can uh, you, you, you can announce yet? Not so much announced, but you could pretty much put it together with 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 Trey with Trey playing in the Seattle Pro Am because he had just got a new teammate last year. You could pretty much put it together who it'll be one of them. You know what I mean? But the way that thing work with them though, man, is they so uh, like spare the moment. You know what I mean? Like the NBA cast, like, hey, bro, uh, Blase Blase want to come play. You know what I mean? So we know they coming, but we just don't know when they come. We know around the time frame. But I'll get a call like randomly. Hey, blase, blase in your in your city. Hey, he trying to catch a game today. So then the media team they get the moving around, scrambling. You know what I mean? But they'll be there for sure, for sure. Well, um, Mondays and Thursdays. Mondays and Thursdays, six thirty start. You know what I mean? Primetime game, seven thirty, eight thirty, and come out and check it out, man. It's fun. For sure, for sure. I told you we're gonna definitely have to, you know, make. A few nights this year. Yeah, man. Bring bring your camera. You know what I mean? Do your thing. Hopefully you get some great content. You know what I mean? We got a new thing called Drip Cam. I see you dripped out, so it'll be all right. You hear me? Yeah, I'll, I'll make, make sure I come correct. Come me. correct, yeah. man. Come correct. <laughs> For sure. Well, like I said, Skins, you know, I appreciate you sitting down with us, bro, taking some time out of the, the busy schedule. I know you got a lot going on this first week, but, yeah. um, you know, definitely uh, – you know oh yeah keep keep uh up to date with everything going on and oh yeah man have make to sure, do it again sometime make sure y'all tune in man and shit, i appreciate y'all you know what i mean i like y'all's uh, platform like i said i don't really like doing these podcast things because they pretty redundant they ask me the same shit but y'all did all right y'all man you asked me shit that i didn't think nobody else would ask you know what i mean ain't nobody else asked me that shit so y'all did well for sure. Well, you I appreciate well. you, bro. I appreciate it, G. No doubt. Hey, man, this is Chris Skinner, a.k.a. Skins, man, and I'm giving you the okay. <laughs>